Okay, welcome to day five of English. Today we are having a look at the text structure of a feature article. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. So yesterday we looked at what stands out most about the feature article and we identified what caught our attention. We worked through our worksheet and we made a prediction on what we thought the article was being um, was going to be about. So over the next few lessons, we're going to be having a look at text structure, language features and vocabulary used in the Ruthless March of the Toxic Invaders. Okay, so our learning contention today, we are learning to understand the text structure, language features and vocabulary of a feature article. Our success criteria, we will know we are successful when we can identify and explain the text structure, language features and vocabulary of a feature article. Okay, so when we're talking about text structure, okay, we're talking about the headline, the byline, the summary lead, paragraphs, captions, and dot point factual information. So let's take a closer look at these features and what their purposes might be. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna have a look at the headline, but before we do that, you're going to need your copy of our feature article. If you don't have a copy in front of you, can you please pause the video, get the copy that um, you are using. Once you've done that, come back and continue on with the lesson. Okay, so let's have a look. Can you locate the headline in the article? Okay, so once you've done that, our headline, remember, it's Ruthless March of the Toxic Invader. Okay, so we can see the font is bigger and bolder when we can compare it to the rest of the article. It's located to the left side of the image. So why do you think it's designed this way? Okay, what we know is the headline catches our attention and tells us where the article begins. Okay, and headlines will usually tell us what the article is about. They're not always gonna be very direct and tell you exactly what it's about, but in a way, it is telling you what the article is about. The byline. You can see the byline is located underneath the headline. Okay, it's written in italics. Okay, and the byline for this article is nothing will prevent the cane toad from becoming part of the Australian landscape. What do you think the purpose of the byline is? Okay, have a think about it. Okay, so the purpose is, it sort of provides the reader with the author's opinion. Remember we were talking about opinion a couple of days ago, fact versus opinion. Okay, so the byline is, um, gives us the, um, sort of an understanding of the author's opinion and the way in which the author is trying to lead us through their article. Okay, so we can see here, the author has said, nothing will prevent this cane toad from becoming part of the Australian landscape. So what we can tell from this is that the author believes that nothing can be done to stop the cane toad. The author has provided us with their opinion of this issue within that byline. Okay, so next we're gonna have a look at the summary lead. So the summary lead is the same as the orientation. It covers the five Ws. The who, what, when, where, and how. So we're looking at who it's about, what has happened, where it has happened, when it happened, and why it happened. And we can see here, this part of our feature article is our summary lead. Okay, so another text structure we're looking at is a paragraph. Okay, so paragraphs are used to indicate main ideas to persuade an audience. They help us to sequence information. They contain a topic sentence, which is a sentence found at the beginning of each paragraph. And that topic sentence also tells us what the paragraph is going to be about. 
Then we have concluding paragraphs and they're found at the end of the article and they sum up and reinforce information that's been provided to us in the article. Okay, over next to the picture, we have some writing and that's what we call a caption. So a caption is located underneath or to the side of an image. It provides further information about the image. Okay, so we can see in this example, um, the person in the photo is a scientist. Okay, so we can tell this from the clues within the image and the caption. So we can look at that image and we can say, well, he looks like he's in a laboratory. He's got his microscope there. He's holding the cane toad. Yeah, possibly he's a scientist. When we read our caption, that's reinforcing it because it's saying here, Professor Rick Shine in his Sydney University lab. So that's giving us more information that the caption is um, reinforcing in a way what we're already seeing in that picture and that's providing us with that information like we think he's a scientist the caption next to it tells us that yes he is a scientist let's look now at our dot point and factual information okay so this is what provides us with additional information it helps us organize the facts in the article and the author will use dot points and factual information to help persuade us to share his or her opinion. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson. What I want you to do now is go and complete the questions on your task sheet. And I would like to say well done to everyone. That is your first week of online learning done. I think from all the information that has been coming back to me so far, you guys are doing an awesome job. Keep it up. Enjoy your weekend and tune in again on Monday when we'll continue on looking at our feature article. But for now, go and complete your questions on your task sheet and then you're done for English for the week. See you next week.